Good morning. I am Joe Nygaard Owens, pastor for digital ministry at the cathedral. It is good to be with you this morning as we join together in prayer. Tuesday, April 9th. Today is the commemoration for Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I pray to you, O Lord, you hear my voice in the morning. At sunrise, I offer my prayer and wait for your answer. Let us pray. God of grace, you have caused the sun to rise and chase away the shadows of death. Each day you promise resurrection, that we may be born again to new life and overcome with you all that would hurt or destroy. Fill us with the Holy Spirit that we may be alive again with the power and the peace of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Hear now these words from Psalm 93. The Lord is king. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord, the waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of mighty waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. A reading from this morning comes from Acts chapter 4 verses 32 through 37. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite from Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. In the first church where I served as pastor, I helped organize a young adult women's book study. These women were intrepid in their reading and wanted to tackle authors like C.S. Lewis and Frederick Beekner. One of our early books was Life Together, the classic exploration of faith in community by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Though we were not living in an intentional Christian community as Bonhoeffer did at the time of writing this book, his instructions for forming community as followers of Christ resonated with the group. They even named themselves the Bonhoeffer Babes to respect remember the spirit of community found in the book. Our passage from Acts shares the forming of an intentional community centered around Jesus' teachings. No one was in want because they shared everything. Sounds pretty perfect and just the way Jesus would want us to live, right? But we're only given the Cliff's Notes version the joyful forming of the group, not the hard work it takes to live together over time. Bonhoeffer says the person who loves their dream of community will destroy community. 
but the person who loves those around them will create community. Oof, those are tough words, but haven't we seen them play out? It's easy to love the ideal, but much harder to live it in real life. It's easy to say we are joined in community, but much harder to love each individual in it. We don't know the full story of this idealistic group in Acts. We do know that Paul's letters were written to early Christian communities that struggled with how to uphold the teachings of Jesus within their own communities. Where are you in community with others? A church, in a book study, in an online group, a fellowship group, a committee. These are just some of the places we are in community together. But our web of interconnectedness has only grown over the years. The pandemic showed us not only how connected we are, but how much we need each other. Our community is not just those we encounter personally, but all of humanity. I wonder what Bonhoeffer would have to say to us today, given our national and global climates. Since he's not here to offer us new words of guidance, admonition, and encouragement, let us turn to the words he wrote while teaching in an underground seminary during World War II. These words were written for instruction for Christian communities, presumably where all are known to each other, but perhaps they have some merit when thinking about our larger communities as well. He says, I can no longer condemn or hate a brother for whom I pray no matter how much trouble he causes me. He goes on to say, if my sinfulness appears to me in any way smaller or less detestable in comparison with the sins of others, I am still not recognizing my sinfulness at all. And finally, Christian love draws no distinction between one enemy and another, except that the more bitter our enemy's hatred, the greater his need for love. Be his enmity political or religious, he has nothing to expect from a follower of Jesus but unqualified love. In such love, there is not inner discord between the private person and the official capacity. In both, we are disciples of Christ, or we are not Christians at all. May these words resonate in you as you seek to live out in your communities. And may you know God's love for yourself and for your neighbor and love all as Christ loved us. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us close with a prayer for the day. Gracious God, the being in the midst of our life, you gave grace to your servant, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, to know and teach the truth as it is in Jesus Christ, and to bear the cost of following him. Grant that we, strengthened by his teaching and example, may receive your word and embrace its call with an undivided heart. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.